On Law Weekly today, we look at the link between corruption and human rights violation, especially in Nigeria. My guest is a lawyer, a scholar, and the legal advisor in Amnesty International Secretariat Absolutely. in London, Dr. Kolawale Olanyo. He holds a doctorate degree in international and comparative human rights law and has done work and written extensively on corruption and the African regional human rights system. Corruption violates human rights in three ways. Number one, it undermines the rights of the people to natural wealth and resources. And the fear of the Ebola virus is making some lawyers think that the Nigerian Bar Association needs to critically assess and perhaps reconsider hosting the forthcoming annual general conference of the association, which is scheduled to commence from the 24th to the 29th of this month in Owere, the capital of Imo State. That is the lineup for this episode of Law Weekly on Channels Television. I am Shola Sheeli. Details come up shortly. About two weeks ago, precisely on the 5th of August, Amnesty International provided fresh video evidence of war crimes and human rights violations being carried out by Nigeria's military in the northeastern part of the country in the fight against Boko Haram and other armed groups. The Nigerian authorities immediately denied it. The scenes that were depicted in that video clearly depict or indicate the pattern that is consistent with the atrocious activities and operations of terrorists in Nigeria and elsewhere. We must unequivocally state that the Nigerian military takes the issue of human rights seriously and will never condone any proven case of abuse by personnel or anyone who is an ally. But what can the country do better in its efforts at protecting and enforcing human rights? My guest, Dr. Kolawale Olanyo, is the legal advisor in Amnesty International Secretariat in London. He's in Nigeria at the moment, and I caught up with him in Lagos to get his views on these issues. He has done extensive work on human rights issues, having first served as Amnesty International's Program Director for Africa. He also serves on the board of the Socio-Economic and Accountability Project, SERAP. He believes that there is a link between corruption and human rights violation for which victims should get effective remedies. Recently, Amnesty International implicated the Nigerian military in the extrajudicial killing of over 600 people in the northeast part of, um, part of Nigeria. And our government, the Nigerian government, has come out to deny it. But what I want to know is, how does Amnesty get its facts and figures? How do you come about this information that you put out you know, from time to time? Amnesty International reputation, as you know, is deeply viewed on the credibility of uh, its research and sources. Uh, Obviously, you know, we talk to victims of human rights violations, we talk to wit uh, witnesses, and of course, you know, you don't expect me to disclose, uh, you know, those sources on national television. But, but uh, rest assured that, uh, you know, once we investigate human rights violations, we double check, we talk to lots of people. People that are involved. People involved, families. To come up with these facts and these figures, they're credible. Absolutely. Absolutely. That is why often time you hardly see any government, you know, uh, undercutting amnesty information. And uh, as I said, the credibility uh, of, of, our, of our report uh, depends on, you know, the, the strength of the sources that we use. So what did you make of the response of the Nigerian government to those claims that amnesty made? You see, when amnesty comes out with a report, with allegations of abuses committed by government soldiers against innocent citizens. Uh, you know, what we expect is a clear court commitment by the government to investigate, you know. But instead of that, what we had, you know, was government, uh, you know, some, some, I would say at least some of the government uh, uh, people, you know, trying to uh, discredit uh, Amnesty International sources of information. So you to deny this. Absolutely, you know. So, so for me, it is the duty of any responsible government, when confronted with this kind of allegation, 
you know, to look into it and to ensure that whoever is suspected to be responsible is brought to justice promptly. You know, there's, there, you know because denying or undercutting or trying to discredit, uh, discredit uh, Amnesty International uh, will not do any justice to the it's victims. Not the way to go. It's not the way to go. You know, at the end of the day, uh, the reality is that the government uh, is a signatory to several international uh, human rights instruments uh, and uh, uh, you know treaties, uh, resolutions, and, and declarations. So the government have got to be seen to be complying with this. On top of that, we have a constitution and that is well granted on fundamental rights. How would you rate uh, Nigeria's performance in the awareness, protection, and enforcement of human rights? Awareness is relative, uh, you know, uh, perhaps it has to have kind of a strategy by the government. But at the moment, I don't think there's any defined clear cut strategy to create awareness uh, about human rights among the citizens. I mean, it's, it's, it's clear. The, the, uh, in this country, we have a high level of illiteracy. Uh, you know, we, we have people whose human rights are literally being violated, but don't know that these are human rights. We even have situations where governments, you know, build as PTUs, construct rules, and try to commission this project as if the kind of charity. So they are doing us a favor. Uh, absolutely. But the reality is that these are human rights. These are basic necessity of life. And these are responsibility of every government. So it's not like a government should be saying or a governor should be saying, you know what, I've constructed this road. No, this is public resources. What about the enforcement? Yeah, uh, enforcement, I think, has a lot of uh, dimensions. When we talk about enforcement, you look at the, uh, the police law enforcement agency, um, and as you know, uh, there's a lot of problems, especially with respect to corruption. Uh, incidentally, I just published a book on corruption and human rights law in Africa, you know, which look at the whole gamut of corruption and the impact that corruption has got on the actualization of people's human rights. Because that has implications for the ability of government to deliver on their human rights obligations and commitment. So, so in a way, in, in my book, what I'm saying is corruption violates human rights in three ways. Number one, it undermines the rights of the people to natural wealth and resources, insofar as leads to property, uh, poverty and frustrates social economic development. And secondly, that corruption has a contributory factor on human rights, i.e., uh, you know, where there is a corrupt judiciary, it is, it, is, it is unrealistic to expect that the citizens will have access to fair hearing. And the last point I'm making in the book is that human rights law has a better, uh, a better mechanism than the criminal uh, law instrument against corruption. And therefore, a human rights approach to corruption is a factual necessity. The solution you're proposing is? The solution I'm proposing is, let's keep the criminal law instrument against corruption, but on top of that, let us have a human rights approach as a complementary legal uh, framework. That is, let us have uh, you know, violations of human rights uh, occasioned by corruption a legally enforceable right. I will give you an example. Ironically, uh, Abasha, the, the late uh, from, uh, the dictator, uh, considered as one of the most corrupt uh, head of state Nigeria has ever had, championed a constitution, the abandoned 1995 constitution in its section 35, says that every Nigerian citizen should have the right to ensure the abolition, complete abolition of corruption in Nigeria. But of course, okay, but, but of course you know what happened. That, that provision was expunged, was you know, removed uh, in, in the 1999 constitution. So what I'm saying in my book is exactly what that section 35 
uh, is saying. 